Uh, good evening. Okay, let's uh, do some exercise real quick. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Uh. Uh. Yeah, let's do some dumbbells. Uh. Oh. Muscle exercise as well as cardio because we're like doing it real fast. Yeah. Oh, that was nice. All right. Much all right. We're going to do some slow, slow kicks and in sequence, okay? So. Cha, 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 cha. That should be good. Let's say five minutes, please. Oh.
Okay. All right. Ah, uh, welcome everybody, and uh, happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Um. Yeah. That's. Turn the heater on and so let's grab some drinks. Uh, uh, okay. So, uh, let me get some water real quick. Uh, yeah, uh, let's see how this uh, mushroom vodka is doing. Is it like, did it become moldy? I think it's fine. It's, as long as I feed it with more vodka, yes. So, yeah, happy uh, Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. And, uh, uh, Let's see. <sighs> yeah, I made the correction in the paper, okay? So, uh, the paper, copy of my other paper. I made like, one mathematical error, actually two errors, and I shared that with you, how I corrected the thing. Um, so we need to grab a whiteboard, I guess. Uh, Well, we just grab this one. Okay, so. so, additive set theory is this, okay? Uh, if you add two sets, it's, it's kind of generalization of integer addition or number addition, okay? Like, a plus one is a plus one, right? But, uh, a well, it's a special case or a more general case. It's just the same as a singleton set of one element. Okay. Now, then a plus one is same as a plus one. Okay. But what if there are more than two members in a set? Then the way additive set Theory, they, that's how they define it, okay? You just distribute everything. A plus one, A plus two, B plus one, B plus two, okay? So that's additive set theory. Uh, it has to do with a um, uh, professor, uh, Freeman Dyson, okay? So it's a very good, good definition, very useful, okay? So, yeah. So then, Set of all the rational number is just set of all rational number between zero and one plus integer. Then you get all the rational num numbers. Okay? That's what we did yesterday, right? Now, I made a mistake in the uh, paper. Um, actually, a like couple, okay, in mathematics wise. So I had to correct it, and I did correct it, and did you publish it? Okay, so. That's what I did after work, and um, other than that, I did not start writing this economics paper. Why? I, I can use some break. We've been very busy writing a hundred page long paper, okay? Yeah. yeah, I told my parents and they were quite impressed, okay? Uh, so, 
didn't quite understand what I was writing there. It's kind of like metaphysics, you know. Hyung uh, Isang Ha in Korean word. Okay, so, alright, so, uh, Was confused Q and Alpha. <sighs> First mistake, I forgot the two. Okay. Second mistake, I made some kind of like I just told you like a two point Alpha to the two point five. Okay. No. And what if you average the two, two these two guys, okay? We are averaging the power, the exponent, okay? And then would it be two? No, you have it has to be square root of two. Why? It's called geometric mean, geometric average, okay? So I made a footnote there too, okay? Wikipedia article, geometric. We are dealing with uh, two numbers that have different exponents, so arithmetic mean is not going to work, okay? The way geometric mean works is this, okay? You multiply 2 alpha squared and alpha 3 squared, you get geometric average of these two things, okay? You multiply them and then square root of them, okay? So that's like uh, square root 2 alpha 2.5, okay? That's the right thing to do, okay? And it occurred to me. I was thinking about this in my bed last night, this morning. Okay, so I did make this correction in the paper. Okay, so yeah. Now, even general Svardo, okay, <coughs> I wrote it in my note, pencil and paper. Um, to even generalize Svardo, a to the x, comma, b to the y, how do you average this? So that is backward comparable, like using this formula, very general formula, okay? You can retrieve geometric average, geometric mean, and also arithmetic mean too, just like plain binary average, plus minus, Divide by two, okay. Like where plus. Uh I'll give you like five minutes, okay. Very general average. This backward comparable with geometric average and arithmetic average, okay. So you have two different bases and two different exponents. Okay. Okay, I'll see you in five minutes, okay? If you want to, okay? Yeah. It's something decent. Yeah, it's mathematics about generalization, right? It's a big part of mathematics, so... Yeah. <clears throat> okay.
Yeah. Okay. So. Generalization of averaging. Okay. And this general formula will include arithmetic average, like A plus B over 2, and also geometry average, A times B square root 2. Okay. You need more time? I'll give you more time. Because I, I want to drink. <laughs> All right. My lower back has some pain, some soreness, uh, but after I did that weightlifting and kicking, slow kicking, pain is gone. Okay, so yeah, exercise is so good. That's the pain medication right there, exercise. Okay, so I did not take ibuprofen, all right. There's no need. Sometimes I need it, but mostly I don't. Exercise. Okay. You need more time? <sighs> I need more time. I want to relax. Yeah. This is a horseshoe. Vodka, okay, horse room. I mean, horse mushroom. Horseshoe mushroom. Yeah. Horseshoe mushroom. It's a chef mushroom that grows on uh, birch tree. Okay. Mostly dead birch tree. Okay. Yeah, they're edible. I mean, you can eat it, I guess, but uh, mostly people make tea, okay? My case, vodka, okay. All right, it's this, okay? Are you ready? Okay. A plus B over 2. X plus Y over 2. <laughs> Too simple? It is. If there are multiple numbers, like three numbers, then yeah, a plus b plus c plus over three, and x plus y plus z over three. Okay, it always goes like that. Why? Uh, because you can retrieve um, arithmetic mean when both x and y, if they are one, yeah, the exponent disappears. One plus one over two, right? And if, then you have plan by lab. Arithmetic mean. Okay. Now, how about geometry mean? Well, it's when a and b, the base of this expo this power number is same. a to the x, comma b, uh, a to the y. Okay. So now a plus b is a plus a to a. So a to the uh, x plus y uh, over two. The square root, right? Yeah. So, a to the x times a to the y square root. Okay, so yeah, this is correct generalization of average. Okay, it's kind of neat, right? Yeah. Yeah, something we noticed, right? Because I, I was thinking, like, is there some, can we define something like logarithmic average? I was thinking about that, but looks like it's not necessary. Maybe in the future, okay. And there's some other kind of averages, like weighted average or harmonic average. What is harmonic average? Is this you inverse harmonic average of a, okay, okay, a comma b is equal to uh, you inverse them, okay? One over a plus 1 over b, and then you inverse it again. Then becomes uh, ab over a plus b. That's harmonic average. Okay, there, there are all multiple di different kinds of averages that's already defined. Okay? Right. Yeah. So that's that. Enough mathematics. Okay, we put this away and uh, talk about something else. Okay. All right. <coughs> Right. 
So, some friends of mine mentioned to me uh, there's this uh, quite recent Korean American movie. They got multiple awards, like in Sundance Film Festival and also in uh, Golden Globe. Okay, this year or last year? Okay, so I was yeah. So I, I thought it was, was it Parasite? They got Academy Award? No, it was different movie. That movie is kind of. Uh, it did not get Academy Award, but it got Golden Globe Award and Sundance Film, Sundance Film Festival Award, okay? And that movie's name is not Parasite, but it's uh, Minari, Minari. Yeah, some friends of mine told me about that, okay? It's a Korean-American movie, directed by Mr. Chang, I think, uh, and he's a couple of months old, younger than me. <laughs> Same age, but a couple of months younger than me, so I was like, hmm. When I made a movie, it didn't. Yeah, it received some small awards and small film festival, but uh, not as big commercial success as his movie. Okay, so it hurt my ego a little bit. But congratulations. Okay. Yeah, congratulations. So I read the plot summary of that movie. Okay, so yeah, it's about. It's, I think it's about Korean Americans, uh, the first generation, second generation Korean Americans. Okay, their struggle, right? <laughs> like cultural adaptation. I think that's what this so uh, the movie is about. Yeah, that's that's cool. That's cool. Anyways. So in my spare time, I uh, nowadays I don't read news anymore. Okay, so I read like Wikipedia articles about history. Okay, uh, there's this uh, bubonic plague. It's called Black Death, uh, Black Plague, bubonic plague. Why? Because this on the crotch there is some French word for cr crotch, like a thigh, groin, bubon. Okay, so. They, once you get it, it's a bacteria-based infection. Some lymph node in your armpit, groin, get very big, swollen, okay? This bubonic plague. And another name for it, yeah, uh, Black Death, Black Plague. Why? Because once you get it, uh, your finger turned black because cells die. At the end of your fingers, okay, fingernails. So, okay. How many people died from bubonic plague, and what year was that? It was thirteen hundreds at the end of Middle Age in Europe. How many people died? They say about half the population of European died. Like two hundred million, hundred times more than COVID nineteen. Okay. So that was very sad, but very interesting history, right? And there are some theories where this bubonic plague originated, and they say it's from China. I don't buy it, okay? They said some DNA tracing, okay? And um, they said this, uh, they discovered in China, uh, and that Bacteria's DNA is very like basal form, like the oldest form they can find. Okay. Well, my question is this. Okay, how about the, the bacteria before that Chinese bacteria, like in 1200s? It must have come from somewhere. It could have come from Europe and then went to China and went back to Europe. That's possible because there are some trade route like Silk Road, okay, between trade between China and Europe, okay. And another evidence, counter evidence that it did not originate from China is that uh, between China and Europe there are this Middle East, right? And it didn't quite go through that Middle East and China, the Middle East and Europe, it did not happen that way. Okay. China and then Egypt and then Europe. That's how it went. Propagation of this bubonic plague. Okay. And in China, there was not that big outbreak of bubonic plague either. 
Okay, so that I think they're just pointing finger at China, blaming China for everything that went wrong in Europe. Okay, the same kind of error that President Trump made. Okay, so I was offended. So I'm Asian. Okay, so. Reading scholarly articles, okay, sometimes I still get offended, okay, so, because, especially when they make some groundless, unfounded accusations to China and to others, okay, when they are wrong, basically, yeah, I get offended, but not as bad as reading the news, because, I stopped reading the news, because, a lot of anti-Asianism -Asia going on, and it, I feel being weakened by those news, okay, and I cannot afford that. Too much negativity, anti-Asianism going on in America, okay. It's too divisive and um, too negativity in the news. I don't need it. So I block the channel, so I, I don't read news anymore. Okay? When will I read news again? Maybe in a year. Or, yeah, when I start campaigning for United States Senate, okay, then, then I have to start reading the news. Maybe a year later, okay. Other than that, I've been just studying Wikipedia, just history, okay. So I, I looked at bubonic plague. Probably the single biggest plague ever, right? And then I thought, like, it, it happened at the end of the middle middle age in Europe, thirteen hundreds, right? For how many years? Something for five years, okay, something like that. It killed half of European population, about two hundred million. Mm. Bubonic plague, they call it Black Death, okay, so. 1300 AD, mid-1300, okay, in Europe. After that, Renaissance. So are they related? I bet they are, okay. So I came up with some theory, okay, and then later on, I kept on reading, and then, yeah, some other scholars has some similar theories, but not exactly the same as what I came up with, okay? So, we'll take five minutes break and I'll share with you some theory about that, okay? What's the relationship between this uh, bubonic plague and uh, Renaissance, okay? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> <coughs>
So, uh, do you have a theory? Can you connect the dots? Well, it's a conjecture, of course. It's not exact science because it's unfalsifiable. The thing is this, okay? Uh, without bubonic plague, can Renaissance still would have occurred? It's possible. We don't know why. Because in the human history, there's no such a thing as alternative universe. Only one thing ends up happening. Okay. So, in a sense, uh, freedom is an illusion. Okay? We can imagine, after one second, my hand go forward, right, left, back, up, down, right? I can imagine all the possibilities, like it, after one second, 10 seconds, will, will my right index finger be pointing? Forward, backward, left, right, up, down. But only what, there are these possibilities. Six possibilities, right? But only one thing ends up happening in 10 seconds. This determinism. Philosophically speaking, okay? Freedom is an illusion, right? Only one thing ends up happening. We can imagine what we want. In 10 seconds, what's going to happen? We can imagine all possibilities. Infinite number of possibilities, okay? But only one thing ends up happening. Our ideological subscription. Jesus said, You did not choose me, I chose you. That's what Jesus said to his disciples. Okay? Ideology works the same way. People don't get to choose ideology, what ideology to subscribe to. It's an illusion. There's no freedom. Ideological subscription is, is not people's choice. No, it's ideology's choice. Ideology chooses the people. How? Mainstream. Peer pressure. Majoritarian view. Majoritarian ideology. We don't have any control over what ideology become mainstream. Then how does it happen? It's mildly process and pluminosism, okay? Uh, when back in the days, 1980s, 1990s, LGBTism was way down there. It was more mostly anti-LGBTism. During President Reagan, uh, President Bush Sr., uh, President Clinton, President George W. Bush Jr. It was anti-gayism was up there. Pro-gayism, down there. And after President Barack Obama, it reversed. Anti-gayism went down and pro-gayism went up. It's dual-dualism, okay? That is something individuals cannot control. Ideologies, they go up and down. It's an ideological cycle. That's beyond on individual's control, okay? And individuals, when anti-gayism is a king, they sub mostly they subscribe to that, mostly. Next era, between, you know, after President Barack Obama and President Trump, and now President Biden, yeah, pro-gayism is the king, anti-gayism is the servant, okay? And nowadays, yeah, most people subscribe to pro-gayism, pro-LGBTism. They don't get to choose that. No, ideologies, they choose people, okay? So there's no f such a thing as free ideological freedom, okay? Uh, people from their background, if they are, grew up very strong. In mean, psychology, I, I have to disagree, okay? Psychotherapy, Sigmund Freudian psychoanalysis, they emphasize trauma, right? They see something that's bad. But in human analogy, uh, those hardships in the past, they make us stronger and smarter. They make us like stronger and smarter, okay? So those are not bad things in, in the eyes of human analogy. But in psychology, they see something very negative. Well, that's one of many things, human, this brand of human analogy disagree with psychology, okay? So. So depending on a person's background, if this person as a child, as a teenager, as a young adult went through some hardships, 
then this person more become a challenger, fighter, resistor, like rebellious a little bit. And this person is it has high discipline level. And so this person is more comfortable when he's fighting against mainstream. So people who grew up very tough in you know, a tough environment, uh, they tend to prefer to be a minority, ideological minority, and I'm one of them. Okay. I, I had a good childhood, don't get me wrong, but I was heavily disciplined when I was a child and a uh, teenager and young adult, okay, yeah. Yeah, so it's like 24 TV show series, okay. Yeah, some people are more comfortable than hell. <laughs> huh? Minority, they prefer to be minority, okay. I'm just one of them, okay. Let me refill this bad card, okay. So Freudian psychotherapists, uh, what they do is, you know, if I'm a psychotherapist, okay. Hey, tell me your story. Your childhood, beginning from your childhood. Okay, yeah, this and this happened like 35, 50, 40 years ago in my childhood. And 30, oh yeah, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Now you are here, you are reacting to a situation. This way, it's because what happened in your childhood 30, 40, 50 years ago, I doubt it. <laughs> That's unfalsifiable, Karl Popperian, you know, science theory. It's not falsifiable. You cannot prove or disprove that kind of dark connecting narrative. It's, that's more like fiction, okay? That's not a science. Okay. How do you prove that? Causation and effect, okay, cause and effect, it's just too remote. It's like butterfly, in chaos theory, butterfly flip its wings and then hundreds of miles later, hundred miles away, ten years later, it became a thunderstorm or tornado. Not likely, okay, so, yeah, nonsense, okay. That's interesting narrative perhaps plausible but i don't find it plausible likely at all okay it's more like fictional fiction writing okay so yeah in human knowledge then what is it in human knowledge called explanation it's this it's a, it's a pain or pleasure that's it okay if a person goes through a lot of pain and suffering as a child teenager, adult, young adult, this person become very strong, all right? All the details, no, it doesn't matter. It's either, or if this person grew up very happy, complacent, relaxing environment as a child, teenager, young adult, this person very become very weak and simplistic and animalistic, unsophisticated. But when person go through hardships, it makes this person smarter and stronger. So those kind of hardship, difficulty in life is a good thing. It strengthens this person, okay? I did write some of that in this past, past paper, okay? So. Yeah. I think I did. Yeah, well. I keep writing, okay, so. Some humanological humanology segments here and there in future papers, okay. So if I doubt I ever written it. Okay. So. Anyway, well, bubonic plague, okay. 
One way to look at it is this. When pandemic happens, it's like in the nature. Human being is part of nature. Okay, we have physical side, metaphysical side. So our physical side behave very much like in wild nature. Okay. It's survival of the fittest. Okay, so after a pandemic happens, only the fittest, strongest, smartest individuals survive. That's the upper half of European population. I mean, I'm not talking about social economic class. Okay, vertically. Right half, left half, okay, all different social hierarchy triangle, okay. Left half, too weak. Right half, very strong. I'm not talking about liberalism versus conservatism, okay. Just weaker individual, all different social hierarchy, yeah, they die. People in the plague, half of them in Europe and Middle East, okay. The other half, the strongest, that the smartest survived, this people in the plague, okay. What happened next? Renaissance. Age of reason, enlightenment. Why? Because only the strongest and smartest people survived. It goes like that. The next stage in human, the Western civilization evolution. It, it, it was it jumped right up there. Why? They got rid of all the undesirable people who are blocking the way. Okay, who are resisting the reason, rationality, logic, truth. Justice, righteousness. People who oppose all those things, like weak people, unwise people, they all died. So now only smart people left. They survived. Mid 1300s, bubonic plague. New era. Okay? Next step in the human evolution. Okay? Just like in the natural world, animals, plants, when pandemic happens, only the strongest survived, the smartest. Okay? So yeah, yeah, so wars, same way, wars, plagues, it, it does help human evolution. Just like it helps animal animal or plants evolution too. Okay. Yeah, human beings we are no exceptions to that. Okay? This one way to look at it. It's not provable, yeah, it's unfalsifiable, it's not exact science, but at least it has some logic and rational behind it, this theory. Connection between bubonic plague, basically paving the way by getting rid of all these undesirable individuals who block the way, who resist the next step okay, in human evolution in the western hemisphere okay but that's one possibility and it makes some logical sense though evolution is darwinian evolution theory is very logic based rationality okay reasoning that's one theory okay right. let's give it a name bubonic plague paving the way of Enlightenment theory. We can call it bubonic phoenix theory, resurrection. Right? Phoenix be, die in the ash, in the ash, in the fire, and get reborn, resurrection from the ash, black ash, burnt ash. Okay, yeah, bubonic phoenix. Theory, how about that? Renaissance, it means resurrection, rebirth. <laughs> Very much in Christian concept, okay? Where before Christianity, Phoenix, that's more like Egyptian, Greek, okay, before Jesus' time. At least 500 before, okay, sure. All right, we'll take five minutes, okay?
so some uh, commentary about Western history. Yeah, I read some Wikipedia articles about this and that, and historians, some of historians are so smart. Yeah, I learned a lot. Okay. They talk about um, some scholars, writers, who are uh, basically kind of reinterpreted Bible, Judeo-Christianity, and express those Judeo-Christian doctrines in secular terms. <laughs> Okay, I was I like that commentary. Good observation, right? I guess what we are doing here is a little bit the same way. We are expressing Judeo-Christian doctrines in a more secular term, scientific term, humanology, right? But humanology is more than Christianity, Judeo-Christianity. Yeah, we admire the Bible, uh, but uh, it's more than that. It's, there's Buddhism, Hinduism, and uh, Taoism. So it's, Amalgamation of Judeo-Christianity, Eastern philosophy like Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism, and also Western science, mathematics, physics, biology. Okay, that's what humanology is made of. Okay, so this is like the foundational cornerstones of humanology. Okay? We take cues from everything. What else? So, John Paul Sartre, he has very interesting biography. Okay? Very interesting character, okay? He's kind of a troublemaker a little bit. Prankster, all right? Albert Camus, Albert Camus. Yeah, they're contemporaries, okay? Post-World War II and also during World War II. French resistance, okay? And they knew they were friends to each other. But Jean Paul Sartre, he liked communism. He liked Stalin. Okay. But Albert Camus, he did not like communism. He did not like Stalin. Okay. So, so they kind of disagreed. Okay. But Jean Paul Sartre, he lived up to his 70s and he was a heavy smoker, chain smoker. Okay. And so, they say he died from this heavy smoking. I don't think so. He died from old age, natural cause. Okay. He lived to the 70s. Okay. But Albert Camus, he died in his 40s, you know, car accident. Some say uh, he was assassinated by KGB. Uh, we don't know. Okay. But he, was, he, he, he died from car accident when he was going to some luxurious party. Okay. Yeah. So, Mr. Albert Camus' uh, biography uh, is kind of short because he died in his 40s, okay. So, but still very interesting, but not as interesting as uh, the Jean Paul Sartre's biography, okay. So, and, um, so yeah, theater of absurd, right? Yeah, Albert Camus is famous for that, and absurdism. That's quite inter inspiring right yeah we look at the world it's absurd right ideologies absurd ideologies like lgbtism or tattoo piercism obesityism it's very absurd okay then why does it happen uh, we know okay it's like anti-art anti-beauty because the peak of America, it was probably during uh, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush era, and Reagan, Bush Sr., Bill Clinton, Bush Jr. Those, those were the peak of America, in my opinion, okay? Where America was very beautiful. Now, next generation, Barack Obama, Donald J. Trump, President Trump, and President Joe Biden now. That's like America going down. But don't worry, it will start to go up again. When? We don't know. <laughs> when it hit the rock bottom, it will start to go up again. It's been always like that, okay? Human history, up and down, up and down, okay? 
Well, America is, right now is kind of going down. Okay. Tattoo piercism, sugar fetishism, obesityism, marijuanaism, LGBTism. Yeah, those are very negative ideologies. So why did those bad ideologies are happening? It's because, uh, anti art, action reaction, anti beauty, anti truth, anti logic, anti reasoning, anti rationality. It happened before in American history, uh, Western history. Turn of the century, early 1900s, okay? Like Einsteinian relativism, very absurd, okay? Yeah. Because they want to be different from the past generation. And the past generation was beautiful, correct, rational, logical. Now, nah. this past parental, grandparental, great grandparental generation. And this new generation want to be different. How can they be different from their righteous, just, beautiful, correct, logical, rational, reasonable generation, their parental generation? They have to go opposite direction. This anti-art, anti-beauty, anti-logic, anti-reasonableness, anti-rationality, everything opposite. Because that's the only way they can do to be brand new. Absurdity, absurdism, okay? That's my interpretation of this Western history that happened in turn of the century, early 1900s, and 100 years later, right now, year 2021. We know this because we are humanologists, we understand this cycle yeah, economists, they notice that too, okay, in the economic setting. Micro cycle, macro cycle, okay. Yeah, economic cycle. And in human energy, yeah, we take you from there. It's like sine curve, okay. Circle. Day and night, day and night, okay. Winter, summer, winter, summer, okay. Winter, spring, summer, fall, winter, spring, summer, autumn, okay. Yeah. It's cyclic. Beauty, ugliness, beauty, ugliness, okay? Because back in the days in Europe, Western fine art, this was called uh, grotesque, is grotesque. I remember looking at it, okay? And it actually, it's something really cool, okay? You have gargoyle and some sculpture, right? monstrous figures. It also happened in Asia too. Buddhism, Tantric Buddhism, like uh, Shiva or Kali, okay? Very scary. Look almost like demonic, devilish kind of, but they are good gods, okay? But goddesses, good goddesses. Yeah, Tanga, some of those uh, Tantric Buddhism, like Tibetan Buddhism, Paintings is very scary, okay, very monstrous, okay. Yeah. We know this, okay, it makes perfect perfect sense to us because we are humanologists. Yeah, this absurd, absurd, wrong ideologies it's action reaction like Newtonian physics, law of motion, right? It's in reaction, counteraction to this previous generation, which is all about beauty, rationality, logic, prosperity, righteousness, justice, okay? Next generation want to do something different. And the only way they can do that is to go opposite of all the good things. So they post all the bad things. That's what we are going through now in 2021 in America. And that happened before, like early 1900s. Okay, so like 100 year, one century cycle of good and bad. Okay. Yeah, and we know for sure good days are ahead of us. The beginning of new era. We'll start war, start war. Okay. When? That I cannot tell you. <laughs> Hopefully soon. There's a, I can only hope. 
right? Like Jesus, Mr. Jesus said, yeah, you cannot know the date, date and time. Only God knows. Okay. We agree? Yeah. We'll take five minutes break, okay? Yeah. We are learning a lot, right? That's great. It's very good.
So last night I watched this uh, 007 movie, uh, the rather more um, <clears throat> the title. Uh, so a little bit disrespectful of females, okay? Octopus and why? Octopus, why? Okay, I cannot pronounce that title. All right, it's too disrespectful. Yeah, in the movie, yeah, promotion of femininity, feminine beauty, that's great part, but some other parts, uh, to disrespectful females, okay. So, some good and bad, like any other movies. It was such a long movie, so I didn't quite finish watching it. I continue watching it, okay. Or not, maybe I'll move on to some another. James Bond movie, uh, but uh, yeah, but, yeah, beautiful ladies there. Yeah, that's how it was back then. <laughs> Good old America, Hollywood movies. Okay, yeah, the promotion of beauty. Nowadays, they're going the opposite direction. Promotion of something very ugly. Okay. Uh, we understand as human analogies, yeah, action reaction, right? And yeah, up and down, minuplosism, dual dualism, okay. We understand it makes perfect sense to us, okay. But uh Mr. Albert Albert Gami, he didn't quite understand the Eastern philosophy. This well, that was like fifty years before us, so we know a lot more than what he knew. Museo Albert Gami, okay. It is that, okay, up and down, up and down, day and night, eternal recurrence. But Mr. Albert Gami, he did read uh, Friedrich Nietzsche and Herr, German philosopher. <laughs> Friedrich Nietzsche talked about eternal recurrence, okay. Because he liked Buddhism, okay, Hinduism. Circle, right? But well, Mr. Albert Kami, he was too busy, perhaps, chasing women's skirts, okay? He was a womanizer, all right? Like many famous writers back then. He spent too much time partying, okay? So. Well, he got made to receive Nobel Prize in literature. Museo Albert Gami, okay. Bright young man, yeah. Congratulations. But when it comes to Museo Jean Paul Sartre, he is like a uh, he got some smarts, he got some wit, some sense of humor, okay? Decent writer, but I don't think he was a very smart man, okay? I don't think so. He subscribed to communism. Well, communism, good and bad, right? American capitalism, American democracy, it did take some, integrated some parts of Marxian, Karl Marxian, communism, socialism, okay? Yeah, social security. Social welfare, minimum wage, disaster relief by federal state government. Okay, there's very much communist socialist idea that America still has. So yeah, also labor union. Okay, yeah. So there's some communism, Marx, Karl Marxian communism, socialism integrated into even American democracy and American capitalism. So, which I think probably is, yeah, labor union, okay, yeah, I, I, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing, okay, I think uh, it could be a good thing, okay, yeah, this communal property, community property, that big pro money, like bank money, bank deposit money, 
savings account money, okay? Get out there, business loan, <laughs> okay? Or car loan, mortgage, home loan, okay? That's community property concept, communism. Socialism, okay? Yeah, it, it's in America too. How about some other concept like insurance money? It's big pool of money, right? Insurance, disaster recovery, disaster assistance, okay? That's common property, communal, community property. Big pool of money. Savings account in banks, collective money, okay, insurance money. That's very much communistic, commun communal property. Karl Marx, okay. How about tax money? Federal state government, tax money. Yeah, social welfare, minimum wage, well, social welfare, social security, disaster assistance, okay, it is. Communal, communal property, big pool of money, federal state government. That's communism, okay? All right? Communal property as opposed to private property. So in American democracy capitalism, we have both two sides, okay? Community, pro community property, like communism, and private property, capitalism. America has both of them integrated into its capitalism and democracy system, okay? And also, yeah, there are other regulatory law, legal policy, state, federal level, uh, unemployment insurance, and minimum wage, right? Labor union, right? Those are very communist socialist policies. Okay, they are not purely democratic or capitalist concepts at all. No. They're very much socialist, communist. Theory, okay. Karl Marxian, okay. So. Okay, Th well, that's one way to look at it. Right. <sighs> what else? Yeah, we're covering a lot. Yeah. So we talk a lot here, right? We go everywhere, right? In human art series, because it's a lot easier to talk than write things down. So the papers I'm writing, okay, I've been writing, it's a subset of what we talk about here, okay? But this human art guru, the human art series, is the real deal. It's like most comprehensive stuff, okay? <laughs> so, because it's a lot easier easier to talk than to write things down. Oral language is a lot easier than written language. That's why some cultures like Alaska natives, okay, or African aboriginals or Australian natives, they only have oral language. This is a lot easier. In Asia, Europe, other parts of the world, they have both oral tradition and written tradition, like Aztec, beautiful hieroglyphic, okay, or Maya, beautiful hieroglyphic, very sophisticated. They have had both oral and written languages, but some other cultures have only oral tradition, which is great, okay. The like American natives, Hawaiian natives, and uh, Polynesian, Pacific Ocean. Natives, okay. They only have oral tradition, okay, which is great, okay. Uh, and um, it's just easier for us to talk as opposed to write them down, okay. But writing may, makes a big difference. Because oral tradition, yeah, lost in translation, information loss in this channel. Channel is noisy, right? So some lost in translation, lost in transmission, and some 
oral tradition is not exact science. They get modified, which is beautiful. Okay, but original message get lost. It get transformed, modified, because it go through many people's tongues. And listening here, hearing, ear. Okay, so it get modified. Some information get lost. Yeah, noise channel, right? Information theory. Shannon, Mr. Hen Shannon, okay. E computer science electronics, okay, so. But when things are written down, it's authentic, original, it gets preserved. Yeah, it gets lost in translation to different languages, but uh, uh, written form, it's more durable. Oral form is more or less transient. Right? So there is some advantage of writing things down. And I'm doing it. Okay. Nowadays I'm taking a break from writing because hey, we just published hundred page long human analysis paper, copy analogy, okay. So we are taking a break, okay. So this we earned that right to take a break from writing. Yeah. We came a long way. Right. Yeah, it's collaboration, okay? Yeah, thank you for being here with me. It's collaboration, okay? So we are working on this together for the betterment of next generation, right? We are doing our part, right? Next paper, economics paper. It will be about this proof of Professor Alfred Marshall. But I will start this paper by acknowledging, admitting, and appreciating Professor Alfred Marshall asking the right question and having done his best to answer it. But his answer was not correct. It was decent answer. Supply and demand curve intersection. But uh, there were some fundamental errors and we had to point them out and we have to correct them. Okay. For future generations sake, because we want them to be bigger and better than us. Okay, we have bridged the gap between past and future generations. Okay. Yeah, we will explain what this Professor Alfred Marshall said, but this part is not right. He has the right question, but he answered it wrong. But not 100% wrong, like 50-50, okay, so 50 right, 50 wrong, okay. So we want to just improve upon what he did. We are doing our job as current generation, like some 100 years later, okay. After we are done with this paper, maybe there are some errors there too. Okay, yeah, be our guests, future generations, okay. Yeah, correct where we were wrong, okay. But you have to learn this though. Okay. Then correct where we erred. By all means, we want to. Because we want to be bigger and better than us, more correct than us. Okay, so just like we did with Professor Alfred Marshall's theory. Okay. So it's continuous tradition of this. Errors and corrections, evolution, being bigger and better, more correct, right? Yeah, it, it's all good, right? Yeah, it's been always done that way. Okay. And we are just doing the same thing. Yeah, like what King Solomon said, yeah, nothing under the sun is new. Yeah, we are pretty much doing the same thing, okay? But at the same time, uh, we do introduce some brand new concepts though, okay, we do, okay, some neologism, brand new vocabulary, okay, in this humanity paper, the truck load of that, okay, brand new vocabulary, copium, copiumology, duodualism, right, minute pluralism, pluminosism, all copium channel, copium resistance, resilience of copium channel. Copium resistance, 
elasticity of coffee on channel. Okay, yeah, there are tons of kind of catch words, right? Catch phrases, very attractive. Okay, so I'm very satisfied with this paper. The way it looks is hundred paper, hundred page long, at one hundred percent. Okay, so I don't want to decrease or increase it. I want to keep it at hundred page. Okay, because it looks cool. Just been, just been one hundred page paper. <laughs> Hundred percent score, baby. Yeah, so I, I I want to keep it that way. Okay, so I did not add anything. Just corrected these mathematical errors. Two errors. Okay, that was that. Right. I republished it. Okay. It's out there. All corrected. Okay. We take five minutes break. We'll do Yeah, my low back, no pain whatsoever because I'm relaxed. Whiskey, vodka, it works. They, they work very well. And exercise works great. Dumbbells, right? And some stretching, like kicking. Kicking, punching is just stretching, okay? Yeah, we are non-violent. We do practice martial arts very slowly, like Tai Chi, right? It's about joints, tendons, muscles, stretching, okay? Yeah. It's best painkillers. No need for medicine, all right? Every now and then we do need it, but other, most times, yeah. Diet, exercise, martial arts, dancing, muscle exercise, running. In my case, yeah, drinking, smoking cigarette, okay. Works for me, okay? Look at me, I'm very healthy. I'm 42 years old, all right? I do drink alcohol. I do smoke cigarettes, but I'm very healthy, okay? It works for me, maybe not for everyone. Okay, so. We'll take five minutes, okay? Okay.
Okay. So let's talk about uh, pain and suffering. Okay. We know pain and suffering makes a person stronger because if I'm used to pain and suffering, yeah, then I can withstand this pain and suffering in my muscle of weightlifting because I'm used to it. So I get stronger, okay? When bubonic plague happened 1300 AD in Europe, it eliminated all the weaker individuals. But for the survivors, this bubonic plague or wars, they made them stronger. Survivors, they made them stronger. We know that. Pain and suffering make us stronger. Yeah, like Friedrich Nietzsche said, what does not kill you, make you stronger, right? We know that, okay? This physical part, but metaphysical part, that's a little bit more tricky, okay? Pain and suffering, why does it make us smarter, like metaphysically stronger? Your brain up there, metaphysics, beyond physics, and then your body, that's physical. Okay, we know pain and suffering make us stronger because we are used to pain, so we, we can withstand the pain and suffering of exercise, cardiovascular, like running, swimming, bicycling, whatever, okay, and then weightlifting, muscle exercise, okay. Yeah, we know that that's easier, okay, this is physical level, but metaphysical level, why pain and suffering make us smarter? That's our next question, and I'll give you five minutes, okay. If you want to answer that question, okay. Yeah, physics, mathematics, uh, physics, metaphysics, they mirror each other, right? So there's a fundamental premise assumption in human logic, okay? So, yeah. So the let me reiterate a question for you. Why do the do this pain and suffering? We understand physical level, it makes us stronger, okay? That's easier question. We already answered it. Okay. Now metaphysically speaking, higher level, why does it pain and suffering? Why do they make us smarter? So that's the question, okay? I give you like Minute or two, all right? If you want to think about it and answer it, okay. Otherwise, I just tell you what I think. <laughs> because I want to be an independent thinker, all right? Like good teachers, they don't just give out answers. No, they want their students to think on their own, right? I'm the same way, okay, so, I'm 42 years old, okay, so, yeah, I'm gonna push you on to teach a little bit, well, I'd rather say, share what I've learned from other people, like you, okay, it's circulation, okay, we teach and learn from each other, circle, two-way street, okay, the little that I learned, yeah, I share with you, okay, so, Yeah, why do pains and sufferings make us smarter? How? What's the mechanism? Narrative? Some details? Connecting the dots, right? Some narrative? It's not exact science. Okay? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we just do our best, right? So, to make sense of the world, what's happening, the history, why it's happening, okay, how it's happening, what's the mechanism? We are trying to understand what's going on in the world, okay. Alright, 
Your time is not up yet. Okay, so keep thinking if you want to. You don't have to, okay? I'll just tell you a story. When I was in my seventh grade, I was accused of cheating. Not in mathematics, not in English. No, in running. We are, I think we are support seventh grade, first year in middle school, Seoul, South Korea, back in 1991. I was accused of cheating in the track, long distance running. Like, I guess it was like one mile running, okay? Seventh grade, so we were like 13 years old, South South Korea back in 1991, something like that. We are supposed to run around in this track in Korean middle school, South South Korea, something like five times. And they accused me, accused me of cheating. They said, I only did four rounds, not five rounds. Why? Because I was, my record was faster than this prom king guy, very popular guy. Charismatic kind of guy, okay. Yeah, there's this guy, okay. He's tall, very tall guy, handsome, not too dark. He's, we are just Asians, Koreans, male, all male middle school, right? He was hugely popular, okay. So, local celebrity, me, underdog. But when we finished this five round, in front of school, in the track, maybe a mile, five times, okay. I was faster than he was. And they could not accept that I was faster than he was. So they accused me of cheating. Oh, you finished just four rounds! When he did five rounds, okay, you cheated. I was accused of cheating or running. <sighs> I don't think I did. Maybe I did, but I don't think I did, okay? Because that guy, he was very good at basketball, football, I mean, soccer. Baseball, okay, he's admired by females and males. All the females want to be with him, date him, and all the males want to be him, okay? He was that kind of prom king kind of guy, very handsome man, okay? He's a nice guy, okay? I, you know, I, I don't have too much against him, okay? He's kind of bourgeoisie, kind of elitist, kind of... Uh... <laughs> he, he's cool, okay? Uh, well, he got some temper. Temper issue though, a little bit maybe, but I uh, I met his parents, his siblings. Okay, he's a nice guy. His father was a doctor. His mother, very beautiful lady. I I don't know what he, she did for a living. Maybe I don't know, but his siblings yeah, could, came from very high family. Okay, high class family, a doctor's family. Okay, so. But yeah, I'm not. A, I was never a huge fan of that guy. But other people were. He was mainstream, majoritarian kind of guy, like President Donald J. Trump in America. Now, or before, all right. Well, President Barack Obama, Barack Hussein Obama. He was that kind of guy. Middle school, seventh grade, when we were like 13 years old, back in 1991, South South Korea. Okay, I I I outran him, all right. As far as I know, I did. Why? He was complacent. He played basketball. He played football. Okay, this long distance running, like one mile or one point five mile, he didn't pay attention. Okay, but me, I was a runner. I, I am a runner. When I was in the U.S. Army, yeah, I was a runner. I loved running. Okay, 
like running is my thing. Okay, so I I bet I I ran. Okay, because he was like, ha ha, he's so happy. I'm popular. Oh, I'm so popular by girls and boys. Okay, everybody knows me. Okay, so he he was just promenade, promenade, promenade. He he's he just running. Okay, just you know, he didn't pay too much attention. This was a popular establishment. Okay. But for me, I was an underdog, 7th grade. I was not popular, I was weird. But running was my thing, okay? So I did my very best. I gave it everything I got. So yeah, I, I did our running. But his followers, couldn't believe it. They could not accept it. So they accused me of cheating. There's like conspiracy theory. Was it, what is conspiracy theory? They lied to themselves because ideal is not equal to real. Like President Trump, he lost the election, but it was not acceptable because ideal is not equal to real. So they lied to themselves and they come up with alternate, alternative reality. The President Trump won the election against President Biden. And yeah, Republicans in America, it's still going on. That's why one of the main reasons, other reasons, okay. I don't watch news anymore, okay. Too much absurdity, okay. I don't need that, all right. They could not accept it. Their hero, number one hero, President Donald J. Trump, losing against by President Joe Biden. They could not accept it. It's too painful for them because President Trump is number one fan, number one hero, right? They could not accept it, okay? This year 2021, January 6th, Capitol Hill riot. Okay? Same thing happened 10 years ago, 10 years before, 25 years before in South South Korea. History repeating itself across time and space. I outran that hero, prom king kind of guy, popular, and I was an underdog. I was not popular, minority. We are all talking about South South Korea in 1991. We are all Asians, there's no racism there. We are all guys, there's no sexism, misogyny there, no. We are all guys. So South Korean guys, a all hundred percent Asians. Okay, I outran them. They could not believe it. They refused to believe it, and they lied to themselves, and they accused me of cheating. Just like twenty-five years later, American Republicans, conservatives, Christians, they accused President Joe Biden of cheating. Why? Because they did not like the result. They could not accept it. Their hero going down, Donald J. Trump. I almost used F word, okay? Because that guy is no good. Not anymore. F not after January 6th, okay? He's a villain, he's a criminal. At least he committed involuntary manslaughter. Seven people died from what he, he did, right? It's kind of deja vu, right? So, when we go through from pain and suffering, falsely accused of cheating, we think about it. It plays in our br brain, not bread, but brain. It stays in our brain, falsely accu accused. We come up with some defense strategy. That's why we become smarter. Because we are thinking about this event when we were wronged, misunderstood, mistaken, wrongfully charged, accused. It plays in our head. We are thinking about it to come up with a defense strategy. That's what why pain and suffering make us smarter. 
like Gogeto Ergo Sum, Mr. I mean, Mazil. Yeah, I think, therefore, I exist. We are thinking, right? And we are thinking differently. That's how we can distinguish ourselves from these majoritarian followers, mainstream, these idolatry worshippers in Democratic Party, Republican Party, just sheep people, followers, okay? They just go along the mainstream, okay? These are zombies, dead people, okay? Metaphysically brainwashed, okay? Whatever, LGBT, this war, anti abortion in the Republican Party, or pro LGBT in the Democratic Party, tattoo piercing, majoritarian, this obesity, sugar fetishism, okay? Everything that bad happened, yeah, blame alcohol, blame cigarette, right? This mainstream majoritarian, sheep people. Your hard mentality, they don't, they are not thinking. Not in, independently, no. They are absorbing like sponge, whatever out there is majoritarian mainstream view. Why they are so insecure, they are so weak, they, they are so small, they want to be part of this big ideology, reliance on, dependence on big power when it's present Barack Obama, when it's present to Donald J. Trump. They just go along, okay? Happy people, easy life, right? No matter what is majoritarian view, yeah, they just switch side, they just go along. Democratic Party, Republican Party, okay? Because that's what they're used to. That's how they grow up as a child. They didn't go through some hardships, like some minority of people in the world. I'm just one of them. Yeah, I'm one of those people who want to be a minority. Why? Because our childhood, teenagerhood, that's how we grow up. Difficult environment, challenging, hardships, pains and suffering. We are used to it. And to live as a minority, like European Jews back in the days, that's what we are used to. Ideological minority. Because life is hard. That's what we are comfortable with. We are more comfortable in hell, like 24 series. Yeah. Asian Almeida, he said that too. Mr. Jack Bauer's girlfriend. <laughs> we are more comfortable in hell. There are only a few of us, okay? I'm adding my own stuff here, okay? But majoritarian people, yeah, they are just used to this comfort of life, easy going. They won't let their life to be easy, so mainstream ideology, they just go along with it, okay. Tattoo piercing, sugar fetishism, obesity, marijuana, pro-Trump or pro-Obama, you name it, pro-Biden, okay, they just go along the mainstream, okay. But there are a handful of us, not just in America. In Korea, in China, Japan, Africa, Europe, anywhere in the world, some of us uh, learn the value of hard life, hard justice, a few good men and women, a few good people. Okay, we are swing borders, center left, center right, independent, undeclared, unaffiliated, okay? We don't go along with partisan vote. Democratic Party, Republican Party, no. We see the people, candidates, we see the person, and we vote for them, okay? So American democracy is, is not perfect, but it's doing pretty well. Bipartisan, two parlor, I mean two party system. It's, it's probably it's the equilibrium, equilibrium point, like triangular structure, there's the equilibrium point, okay. Uh, they talk about communism, communist revolution, revolt. It's just one dictator depressed by another dictator, totalitarianism, okay. It's always become triangular structure in Soviet Union, Cuba, North Korea. 
China, it's all the same. It's triangular. It's not even communism, pure communism imagined by Karl Marx. It does not exist. Okay, it's so of the fittest. Okay, it's always elitism. Okay, it's a triangular structure like pyramid. Okay, it is. They cannot be broken. It's the law of nature. Mm. And who's the wealthiest in Cuba, Soviet Union, Russia, North Vietnam, North Korea, China? Yeah, top dogs. They get all the meat, bread. Okay. Chairman Mao, Chairman Deng Xiaoping. Yeah, it's all the same, okay? No matter what ideology they subscribe to, communism, capitalism, it's always the hard working people or some dynasty inheritance concept, okay? Hard is studying and working for get older. Headlight, top light, limelight, spotlight. Communism, capitalism, doesn't matter, okay? It's always triangular, okay? And it's never even, it only exists in our head or the head of brain of Karl Marx is ideal in Karl Marx, but it's never real. It just doesn't work that way. In communism countries, socialist countries, it's always triangular, okay? Always top dogs getting the best of the cream. Luxury. Comfort. All right? It, it's, it's just ecological triangle, biology, right? That's just law of nature. Okay. Yeah, it has to do with gravity. Okay? Yeah. So, Mr. Karl Marx, we appreciate his imagination, but it only exists in his, his head, not in real real world. Okay? <laughs> Well, he erred big time, Mr. Karl Marx. He got some goods, okay? Yeah, but mostly he was wrong. All right? We'll take five minutes, okay? We'll wrap up very soon, okay? Because I'm kind of drunk, all right? What movie am I going to next? see next? Uh, maybe Batman movie. I don't know. 007, I watch enough. Okay. Yeah, maybe I watch Batman movie. Thank you, Kosu. I don't know. But I have my dinner, though. Okay. Let me start cooking my dinner, okay?
Okay. Well, let's talk about degree of freedom. Okay, so in physical chemistry, like second law of thermodynamics, law of entropy. Okay, yeah, degree of freedom. Yeah, I learned very well there. Okay, so, so degree of freedom, right? You have laws, regulations, rules. Mr. G just said, yeah, the road to heaven is very narrow. All are resistance, okay? You have to follow the law, rules, laws, prescriptive, the code of conduct, right? Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not rape, thou shalt not do this thing, and you must honor your parents. Prescriptive rules. You must be heterosexual in Judeo Christianity, okay? Yeah, and marriage law, marriage rule, okay? It, I have to be single, and you have to be opposite gender, and she has to be single, and we cannot be related, we cannot be relatives, and you should be same race, opposite gender. She should be single, I should be single for marriage. And she should want me and I should want her. It should be mutually agreeable. And some other concept, yeah, it should be socioeconomically same class to for this marriage to last. And she just said, you should not divorce. Yeah, raise the children. Same race, opposite gender, and you should be both single, no adultery, and so many rules there. <laughs> it's very narrow road to make this perf hundred percent, hundred percent perfect marriage. There's only one right way because there are so many rules. You have to abide by all these rules. No domestic violence forgiveness, and spend time with your children, spend time with your spouse, right? At the same time, you have to work, go to work, make money, bring bread to the table, feed your wife and children, and no adultery, no cheating, no lying, no stealing, no murdering, no burglarizing, no thieving, no stealing, no arson, it's so many rules to, according to Jesus, to go to heaven, to be righteous, to be correct. So many rules to abide by. Okay? It's like billiard, yeah, <coughs> low of entropy, okay? You have billiard table, pool table, all right? Number one, two, three, all the way to nine or eight, I don't know. Okay, I don't play pools. <laughs> You know, from south to north, in the middle of the table, right angle, perpendicular to this base table. There's only one way to do so. All these numbers in these billiard boards facing up correctly, perfectly, okay? There's only one way to do this, okay? Because there's so many rules. It has to face from south to north, perpendicular to this bottom table edge, one through nine. I don't play pros, okay? With one through eight, I don't know, okay? Each number in the, each ball facing off. So many rules, okay? How about chaos? There's cosmos, order. How about chaos? More ways to, more degrees of freedom. You have LGBTQI, whatever, this LGBT alphabet soup, okay? You get, have tattoos and piercings. All different body parts, skin surface, there are so many ways to do it. So many ways to tattoo it. All different colors, all different metallic structures, all different body parts. There are so many different ways to do it. Okay. So that's why to do the right thing is a lot more difficult to do the wrong things. Why? Because there's only one right answer.
and there are so many rules. And to be right, you have to abide by, obey all these rules. To be wrong, you need to break only one rule. To be wrong, there are so many different ways to be wrong. Because there are so many rules, you need just to break with this one rule to be wrong, okay? Yeah, that's kind of inspired by this 24 TV series, okay, when Mr. Jack Bauer was talking to this farm father or this uh, character, okay? But he didn't know she was a spy, okay? So, well, there's 24 TV series, okay? So. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm not quite sure if it was Jean uh, Paul Sartre or not to be confused with Jean Claude Van Damme. Okay, Jean Paul Sartre, Albert Camus. Okay, they say something like uh, I'm kind of paraphrasing, adding my own stuff. Okay, yeah, freedom can be a curse. Burden of freedom. Okay, freedom can be a curse. Why? Because we are, when you are free to do all these immoral, unethical things, it will eventually burden us. It become a burden, okay? Like Judeo-Christianity, Mr. Jesus, yeah, when you commit sin, when you do something wrong, it will control you, okay? You will be under this burden of sin, right? Until you repent, right? Yeah. So freedom to commit immorality, unethicality, yeah, you, I mean, tattoo piercing, sugar fetism, obesity, marijuana, that's not illegal, okay? Adultery is not illegal. Back in the days, it used to be, but nowadays, adultery, promiscuity, fornication, that's not illegal. But they are immoral and unethical because they are bad for you, right? So this degree of freedom, okay, you subscribe to this post-January 6th pro-Trumpism or whatever ide unsound ideas out there, okay. Yeah, you're burdened with freedom, okay. I'm paraphrasing, adding my own stuff from what Jean Paul Sartre or Albert Kahn said, okay, so. Yeah, freedom can be a very bad thing. Because we are free to do, if we are free to do unethical, immoral things, after that, yeah, minor pluralism, I mean, pluralism, okay, yeah, we'll suffer the consequence by operation of karma, mechanism of karma, okay. So in humanology, it's descriptive law, it's also prescriptive law too. When we prove logically, rationally, this ideology is unsound, so that's this descriptive part, the truth, okay? Then we recommend to other people that we recommend you not to subscribe to this bad ideology. Why? Because as far as we know, rationally, scientifically, logically, we just prove that this ideology is very bad, toxic, unsound ideology. So we recommend you not to subscribe to this ideology. There's the prescriptive part. First, descriptive part. We describe this ideology as bad. Prescriptive part, prescriptive part, normative law, as opposed to natural law. Yeah. We recommend you not to do this, but we don't order you because we are not in position to give you any mandate. We want you to be free, God-given freedom, free will. We just make our recommendations that you don't subscribe to these bad ideologies. Okay? So that's what we do here. Okay? Okay, enough said, all right? So we wrap up tonight, all right? And um, I continue cooking my dinner in the microwave. What's in there? 
chicken wings, baby potatoes and vegetables and water. Some dumplings, okay. Oh, purchased from Walmart. Three days ago. I'm looking forward to taste this dinner. Okay, so very humble dinner, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. God bless you. I love you. Thank you for loving me. Okay. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye.